Hi, I'm Tim. In this video, let's take a look at the previously unsuccessful um, Guilo Zero model. It was underpowered and not quite balanced correctly, and see how I successfully got it to fly with a bigger motor and ailerons. Let's get to it. This is my model of the Guilo Zero, and in the previous video, I'll put a card up for that video. I used my Park Zone um, electronics to uh, fly the model. I've had great success with the Park Zone micro electronics for lighter models such as the uh, Guilo's um, Aronica. However, I found through experience that the weight had to be about under three ounces to fly successfully. With a short nose moment of the Zero, I had to add about seven tenths of an ounce nose weight to bring the center of gravity into um, the proper range. And it just did not have enough power with a small uh, Park Zone micro motor to have it fly successfully. It just didn't have enough power. So I decided to go back to the shop and to figure if I could do something. I also noticed on the uh, early flights with the Park Zone that the, the wings, I, I had a hard time keeping the wings level because I was using rudder control. So I decided because this is a little bit faster model, it's a World War II fighter, Guilo's Hellcat model with ailerons. You can see the ailerons on this model with the aileron servos underneath. The ailerons are about two-thirds the uh, wingspan. I decided to add ailerons to the Zero to see if that might have, uh, help with the lateral stability. So in the video, you'll see how I add the Suppo motor. Details are in the description. And because this is a retrofit, I just decided to have these strip ailerons here. Um, it's the original Zero did not have strip ailerons. This is just a quick fix. And what I did, again for simplicity, I did these strip ailerons with a single servo mounted underneath here to control horns. Nothing elegant, but it'll get the job done. And as a further item, I used monocoat hinges on top for a completely sealed hinge on the ailerons. And that seemed to do the trick pretty well. We'll go through in the video the, the build process of that. I've had a number of successful conversions of Wheelos model airplanes to radio controlled flight. <clears throat> I'll put a card up that you can see. I think there's five uh, prior to the Zero. But uh, the Zero did not fly well. So let's talk a little bit about what happened. First of all, for my conversions, for all previous Guilos, I used the Park Zone line of microelectronics. So I'll put a card up on where you can get that. These are very handy to use because this is the battery. It plugs in here. This brick is a receiver and electronic speed control, two linear servos to the motor. It's just lightweight, easy. But the power of the system is good to a model of about three ounces. That's about the upper weight for these Guilos models. The Zero, when I completed construction, with the equipment inside was right at three ounces. The problem is with this very short nose moment, the distance from the leading edge of the wing to the nose, I don't have a lot of distance to balance it out for the center of gravity, and there's a fair amount of structure um, behind the center of gravity. So what I had to do was add seven tenths of an ounce, these ounces here, to the front to bring the center of gravity into balance. That put the total weight at 3.7 ounces, and it just it was just too heavy to fly. So let's take a look at the test flights I did with this lower motor. You can see the plane wants to fly, but it stalls out. It just does not have enough power. So what I decided to do is just put in normal electronics with separate servos, receiver, ESC, and a motor, <clears throat> much like my Guilo's Hellcat, a, a larger Guilo's conversion. So what I've decided to do for this conversion is I have an Altitude Hobbies motor here. I'll give details in the description what this motor is, but this is a standalone brushless motor. 
a Talon 15 um, Castle electronic speed control, a little uh, uh, AR410 receiver from uh, Spectrum, and then two HS40 servos. And I'm using this for the LiPo battery. Again, this whole weight comes in at uh, 3.1 ounces for everything right here. So it's a little bit heavier than I'd like, but I'm going to put in purposely a little bit heavier gear to see how the Zero handles. So let's see how much power the motor has. I'll plug in. And you can see with the little um, HS40 servos here, they work fine. There's the elevator, and that'll be for the rudder. So that'll be good. And I just use a little bit of foam board for a test. Make sure the wires are clear. So I think that'll be sufficient power. It's going to be a little bit of a heavy model, but it's got a fair amount of wing error. We'll just have to flatten a little bit fast. So I haven't done one of these re-engineering before uh, projects before. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. So let me just give you my initial thoughts <clears throat> before I dive into this, because what will happen is I'll look at it, figure it out, do something, then we'll talk about it in a video after the fact, because there's no plan for something like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off the cowl, the plastic cowl. I just use the um, park light covering on here, top and bottom, but I'll take that off. Then I'm going to have to remove the motor and the weights. I'll have to open up the firewall a little bit to get the park zone equipment uh, out from here. Put in the servos, the other electronics, keeping an eye with the center of gravity. I think I'm almost certainly going to have to keep the battery in front of the firewall to keep the weight as far forward and then just see how it goes. Remember, this is a prototype to see how, see how everything goes together. It is possible I might fly it without a cowl just to see how the power arrangements goes because if it goes well, my plan always with something like this is work out all the kinks of the prototype, then build a follow-on model where you know everything works and you can make it nice and pretty and take in lessons learned. So that's where I stand with the Zero. The next step is taking out the park zone electronics. The cowl is off. You can see the motor mount, the washers for the center gravity location. The plastic cowl is a little bit beat up, but we'll just have to live with that. Next step is the pair of pliers to take off the motor mount. We'll put on a plywood to prepare for the um, upgraded motor. This is the ESC brick being taken out. Careful to keep the control rods in place because we're going to use those for our servos. ESC brick is completely removed here, all set for use in another Wheelos airplane. This is the view of the nose section with the servos installed with double-sided sticky tape to the underside of the top of the fuselage. Preparing now the electronics, the AR610 receiver and electronic speed control. Those are stuffed in place as best as I can, keeping the way forward with the battery connector still sticking outside and a nice uh, view of the servos installed with uh, double-sided tape. We've got a lot done <clears throat> on the Zero. Uh, the two servos, the receiver, the electronic speed controller inside. You saw the previous videos where those were inside. I want to emphasize the use of this uh, sticky tape. It's sticky on this side as well as this side when you pull off the red. It's a very handy thing for mounting the smaller equipment, and that's what I used to mount the two servos on the planks that was inside. I put a piece of plywood across here, some popsicle sticks on the side, washers to get a little bit of down, a little bit of right thrust, and this is the motor with the controls. The center of gravity is such, I think the battery can be put underneath here. I'll, I'll tackle that tomorrow. Again, this is not an optimum long-term solution because to get at any of the servos inside, I have to literally take off the motor again, which is not good. You want a hatch on here like I showed with the Hellcat. But, this is a prototype just to see if there's enough power. So let's hook it up and take a look. We can see up elevator, down elevator. I think that's enough. And now we'll look at the motor, see how much thrust we get. I'll just hold the battery. So 
I think that'll be enough as a five by three prop. It's certainly more than the park zone. And we'll see if that's going to be enough power. Next big task is finding room for the battery. <clears throat> I want to keep it as far forward as possible. So I cut away the front, trying to keep as much as I can to keep the firewall connected. This is a good space for the battery. I just use clear scotch tape to hold it in for the test flights. I've completed the upgrade modification to the zero. Here's in the top view, the front view. This is the bottom. Again, this is a prototype just to see if everything works. So the battery is a bigger battery. There are smaller batteries out here. This is what I have. There are smaller connectors and GSTs. But again, I'm, I'm rounding up. I'm making it worst case scenario to see how it goes. So if you do a follow-on build, there's obviously much better ways of placement of the battery. I had to put it a little bit close to the front to do the center of gravity. If we hold it at the center of gravity, you see it balances very nicely. So we don't have to add any weight. The battery is where it should be. The other stuff the ESC and receiver are put in here is not a pretty installation, but it's okay for a few test flights. The weight of the completed airplane battery and everything that I'm holding here is 5.3 ounces. The previous one was 3.7, so it added about an ounce and a half, the, the, the new hardware, which really isn't all that much, but 7 tenths of an ounce was the nose weight, which you can now use for the battery. So we'll see how that works. 5x3 prop, the motor I'll put in the description is from Altitude Hobbies. Two things. First of all, the motor to install it, I had to put some washers in there for a little bit of down and right thrust. Because I was modifying the plywood that I screwed it into, it wasn't perfectly straight. Didn't worry about that too much because washers can make that uh, work out. The other thing, I can't show it here, but with this motor, the shaft sticks out just a little bit on the back of the motor. You have to be aware of that because I had to drill a hole in the firewall to make sure that that extension wouldn't, would be free to move around. It wasn't um, uh, bonded by the uh, installation against the plywood. The other thing I wanted to point out, and this is original for the model, my technique for these very thin control rods, I kept the original rods inside the fuselage. And where they come out, there's really two rods here, one to the um, tail and elevator, then they overlap where that heat shrink tubing is. So what I do is with the two rods, I put on the heat shrink tubing, adjust this completely in the middle, shrink it with a heat gun, and then put a pox at the end. That's a very easy way to uh, put in the control rods, both for the um, rudder and here for the elevator. So I think we're done. Um, wing is warp free. Uh, the next thing is to find some good weather and give it a test flight to see if it works. I got together the camera crew this morning, i.e. my lovely wife who does all the video work with an iPhone for these videos, and I just to give a, a little test hop to see how the new power um, of the motor would do on this airplane. So I went to a parking lot across the way and um, it seems like it has enough power, but the plane crashed. So I was kind of afraid or worried in the back of my mind this is going to happen. What the situation is, how does an airplane turn? Do we turn it with rudder or aileron or both or what? I'm going to have a separate video on this, but the answer is it depends on the type of airplane. If you have a high wing airplane that's fairly stable, it can very easily fly with rudder control flight. For example, the Willows Aronka that I have. For a more maneuverable aircraft, especially low-wing aircraft, especially World War II fighter low-wing aircraft, to have it turn with rudder is uh, not a really wonderful situation because if the airplane is slow, like on initial hand launch or takeoff, um, the rudder just doesn't have enough control authority if it starts to dip a wing to turn it to pick up that wing. What you want to have is ailerons to do that. And on my Guilo's Hellcat conversion, I knew this off the bat, that's why I put ailerons on it from the very beginning to make sure that it would have sufficient um, lateral roll control for uh, the flight that it was going to be doing. But this is part of the test of the Japanese Zero to see if rudder would be sufficient. It's not going to be sufficient. So what to do? This, the original airplane obviously has ailerons on the outboard, there'd be a lot of work to put those on. So what I decided to do to give it aileron capability was to simply put on some strip ailerons. So here are the strip ailerons. If you look on the bottom, you can see that I covered them in brown covering just so you can see those. Strip ailerons used to be an extremely common type of aileron for a rate control model aircraft. The reason is they're very easy to put on. They're just the, the, the trailing edge of the aircraft. 
but they're very easy to control and set up with one servo back in the days when servos were expensive we didn't have these small servos we could put out in the wings with extensions and all that so i just took a 1 16th inch balsa covered it with um the park light covering used tape for the hinge and this is the setup that i have for the servo i took the rudder servo from inside here cut a hole some double-sided sticky tape just mounted it against the center keel and then just with push rods out to uh, each um aileron the shrink tubing because the wire overlaps in here can adjust them precisely shrink the tubing some epoxy and let's see how that works from the um servo and you can see if you look from the back we do have ailerons now for the zero and i think that'll be enough control we'll see so that is the approach and uh, what will happen is we'll wait to go out to the regular flying, flying field where we have plenty of uh, space to fly this. Just get the, get the plane going straight, pick up a head of steam, get some airspeed, and then we'll turn the ailerons. And I think we'll see if that works out okay. All right, so this is the test flight of the Zero with ailerons. We just completed the uh, <coughs> second series of test flights with the new motor. Very happy the way it flies. It actually needs a little bit more aileron control, which surprises me, but we'll go back to the shop and discuss that later on today. But this is a zero. I think it looked nice and it flew nice, and I'm very happy that the ailerons seem to have solved the trick. Overall, I'm very happy with the zero. I, th I think it's a good looking airplane. I think it's got a good amount of wing area. I think the strip ailerons might be a good idea on this. If I were to build a second one, I might make the ailerons just a little bit bigger. They had about a quarter inch uh, up and down, so there's plenty of throw. But I think just the nature of this model, it needs a fair amount of ailerons to keep it going. If you wanted to add another servo for the rudder, I remember the original model uh, was three channels with rudder, elevator, no ailerons. You could add another um, a, a servo for the rudder. That would certainly help with lateral control. But keep the speed up. Uh, this motor provides plenty of power. The total weight, I think, is about right at 6.2 ounces. It, it flies about right. You can see when it's flying, it's really quite smooth fly. You just have to keep your speed up a little bit. The other thing I would do for another build, again, you've got a fairly short nose moment, so you've got to keep all your equipment as far forward as possible. I think I would add some sort of hatch like I did on the Hellcat, this is the hatch here to have easy access for all the equipment that's in there. Of course, this is a bigger airplane. And the other thing I'll do, I would recommend, is add a little bit of washout to the wings. I'll be producing a separate video on washout. A washout was an old construction technique for free flight models. But what would happen is, as you build it, you would raise the trailing edge out towards the end of the wing, up maybe a quarter of an inch, to induce a little bit of twist. So the model um, was getting ready to stall. The inner wing would have a higher angle of attack than the outer section, which was twisted down a little, a, a little bit. 
very easy to build that in. Um, I think I would probably do that next time. So it's a nice kit. It's another um, example of a Guilo's conversion. I'll put all the details of the HS40 servos into the description, but I think the HS40 servos, the Spectrum 620, the Suppo motor, and a Thunder Power 325 two cell LiPo battery is an excellent power combination for a model of this type. Good luck with your build. Bye.